In previous videos, we talked about very simple geometric shapes, circles, frames, ellipse, and so forth. Now we want to cover things of arbitrary shape, where we're going to use lines and arcs. Lines and arcs is a uh, series of segments that lie within one particular block. Here in the example you see we have a mill contour block, it's block number one, and that block is made up of several lines and arcs and so forth, which we call segments. Some of the segments that we have available would be line, arc, blend arc, which is simply going to be an arc that is with a specific radius will be placed between two other segments, whether it be a line, an arc, uh, two lines, and so forth. Helix is something that we can use very similar to thread milling. You're not only going to give it a, a radius and it's going to continually um, go in a, in a circular motion, but it's going to drop down a value in Z every revolution. Then we have 3D arc. This is used for special cases. Um, these 3D arcs are in the XZ or YZ plane. We don't always have to program lines and arcs segments in the 2D or XY plane. We can also do some arcs in the XZ or YZ as I mentioned. But the line through helix up there, those four are the most commonly used in any of the programs that we're going to write. Now here we see an example of segment zero. I mentioned that these mill contour blocks are broken up into segments. Segment zero is the only segment where we're going to uh, determine a starting point. Everything from this point on, beginning with segment one until we end the, prof the profile with as many segments as we need, will be endpoints. But segment zero contains that starting point. Segment zero also contains all the necessary information such as tooling, depth, what's the speeds and speeds, what's the milling type, um, whether or not we're enabling blending moves, so forth. This is the, also the only segment where we can change the tool number or add a finish tool and so forth. So segment zero, think of that as the beginning of the profile. Then we add segments from that point on by selecting the second button down there, the next segment button, that would, would advance me to the next segment, and I would select the type of segment that I want, a line, an arc, a blend arc, and so forth. Here we see that segment one is a line, and we've programmed the X endpoint. Uh, we didn't know the Y endpoint, but we did know the angle in this case. I know that because the Y end and the calculate and the XY length are both calculated values. So everything else was put in as a hard value. So we would put the endpoints of the line, it would calculate the information that we didn't put in that it was able to calculate. And you'll notice that all of the information such as tooling, speeds and feeds, and so forth are grayed out. That's because they can only be set in the segment zero. It's the only time I can change that information. I also want to point out that everything in the white open fields on the left hand side where we've entered in information, that is the point where we're ending. If you look to the right, we see the X, Y, and Z starting point. That is the point in which you are coming from. I can't alter that information. It's there for information for uh, data that's given to me only, but it is helpful in many cases. Now when we start to program in lines and arcs, we also want to think about the Herco compass. We talked about the Herco compass a little bit when we did bolt circles, but here it becomes important as well. Again, zero degrees is at three o'clock, and a positive move is in the counterclockwise direction. When I'm programming lines and arcs, I think of the Herco compass as a gun sight. If I place the crosshairs on the point that I'm coming from, or my origination point, the programmed line or feature that I'm programming passes through the compass at some degree of angle. I can simply place that comp that crosshair on my origination point and then follow the line to determine what the angle is going to be that I need to program. In this case it looks like it would be about 225 degrees or 45 degrees plus of 180 or less than 45 degrees from 270. Either way I would be able to determine that angle. Now with the Lines and arcs, we have to make a few more decisions, and these decisions are going to affect the way the block runs. So we need to plan our work and work our plan. In this case, I need to determine 
where am I going to start? What is the most reasonable place for me to start this contour? The direction in which I program this is what is going to control whether I am using conventional milling or Klein milling to cut my part. It's also going to determine whether I need to use cutter comp left or cutter comp right. So where I start and the direction in which I program the profile is very important. In this part, particular instance, I'm just going to cut three segments. All three of them are line segments. The intersections of those three lines are shown with the little green dots. And you can see that I want to start way up at the 12 o'clock position, moving straight down to the first intersection, moving at a about approximately 45 degree angle down and to the left, and then continue consistently to the left to my end point, which is the final red dot down in the bottom left corner. So from this I've determined where I want to start approximately. I know the direction in which I'm going to travel. I know the end point, and I know that I'm going to have three segments, and they're going to be lines, and I can see where those intersection points are. So before I ever begin, I need to come up with what is the plan that I'm going to use when I program this. In this case, I would like to start off the part a little bit so I can begin to feed onto the part. So here's the program we're going to use. In this particular example, we see that our starting point for X, this is exactly uh, the print that we're going to use, but this is an exact replica of, of the previous slide. You see the X value is a 2.25. That is a known print dimension. So that's going to be my X start for this particular feature. However, the Y that I wanted to use is going to be some distance off of the part. It's going to be above the part here in this case. So we're going to have to pick a value there. And I would say maybe we want to use something that's a little bit larger than the radius of the tool, so maybe a half an inch. So using these rules that we talked about, using segment zero as your starting point, and then the next segment for your lines, try to program intro 16. Again, you're going to start in the upper right corner. You're going to come straight down, move to your left, to your final point. As, a, as all the prints in this packet, intro 16 will have a separate video which will walk you through step by step if you need that, intro, that instruction.